I welcome you to the module number 12 of this course and this module is about some applied aspect of emotions and emotional intelligence. Now, this is the last lecture of this module and also it, this is the last lecture of this course. So, that is the lecture number 31. So, this is the last lecture of this course. So, today's uh, lecture will be talking about the development of emotional intelligence. Uh, some of the factors that influence the development of emotional intelligence from childhood to adulthood and uh, how we can kind of make interventions and apply some of this understanding in terms of facilitation of the emotional intelligence. So, uh, before uh, discussing today's lecture, let me give you a brief recap of what we discussed in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we uh, specifically discussed about uh, the role of emotional intelligence in the context of health and well-being. So, in that context, we try to see how emotional intelligence is relevant in the context of health, both physical health and mental health. In the context of mental health, two different aspects we have discussed separately. One is mental disorders and another is uh, various indicators of well-being. So, overall, a uh, lot of research indicates that uh, emotional intelligence is one of the important aspect or uh, core aspect of, uh, you know, uh, the mental health and well-being because a lot of the psychological disorders actually you know we can loosely say that uh, they, 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 they are largely based on emotion based disorders and there are problems with the emotions and emotion regulation. So, in some context we can loosely say that a lot of these people who are experiencing this kind of psychological disorders are actually you know lack some aspects of emotional intelligence. So, in that context it is very relevant in various disorders. Uh, we have kind of reviewed various uh, research findings related to both physical health and mental health and as well as various indicators of well-being such as uh, life satisfaction, uh, subjective well-being uh, and uh, other various uh, indicators such as positive emotions and so on. So, today we will be talking about the concept of development of emotional intelligence and how it develops from childhood to adulthood and in that context we will be talking about one particular model which is called as investment model of emotional intelligence and uh, there will be looking at three major uh, factors or which could explain three major factors which could explain individual differences in the emotional intelligence. So, one is biological factors, another is rule based learning and third one is self aware emotion regulation and at the end we will be talking kind of briefly summarize the journey of this whole course in terms of the different topics concepts that we have discussed throughout this course. So, let us start today's lecture. So, the con when we talk about developing emotional intelligence you know how it develops as the child grows and uh, different factors that influence uh, the development of emotional intelligence and other competencies uh, at different stages of life uh, we will be kind of uh, looking at those aspects. So, a lo 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 lot of these preceding lectures that we have discussed on emotional intelligence, uh, we have been focusing on various skills. So, initially we talked about the introduction, introduction and various theories of emotional intelligence and then we discussed uh, different skills of emotional intelligence one by one in different lectures and we discussed how those skills can also be developed. Now, in this lecture we will be kind of our approach will be little bit different in a sense because specific skills we have understood and how to develop them also we have understood. Here we will be focusing on application of emotional intelligence more specifically you know a uh, kind of how it develops from childhood to adulthood as child progresses and the different factors that influences that. So, and various factors like biological and sociocultural factors that influence this development so, which can explain why some individuals have higher emotional intelligence as compared to others. So, in that context to understand this development perspective of emotional intelligence, we will be using this model of Zidner et, et al. In 2003, they proposed a model which is called as an investment model of emotional intelligence. So, this model basically says that emotional development depends on diverse processes, more specifically the development of emotional intelligence and various emotional competencies depends on three qualitatively different processes. So, obviously, we have already understood that this whole development of emotion uh, depends on diversity, very complex thing and it depends on so many factors. 
and when we talk about emotional intelligence more specifically this model says there are three interrelated factors or interacting factors which kind of give rise to this differential uh, capabilities in different individuals and uh, these three basically factors will be talking about in the in this lecture so as the child grows the level of emotional processing becomes much more sophisticated and the control of adaptation shifts from biologic based temperament to rule based to the self directed regulation of emotion so as the child grows its ability to process uh, emotional emotions and information related to emotion also becomes more and more sophisticated as the child grows and it kind of its, its, its journey starts from more biologically based so initially a child is very biologically oriented the different tendencies that are there within the biology will determine its emotional experiences so the, the, the especially the during initial years of childhood uh, the emotion is very much biologically oriented and then it kinds of grows to rule based learning as the child grows it learns various rules and regulations how to manage emotion how to express it learns from the social environment socio cultural environment and then kind of the child learns more sophisticated kind of understanding of emotions and ex kind of uh, regulation of emotion which is called as uh, self directed on with the increase in the awareness of self understanding about themselves and their social world it becomes much more awareness based kind of regulation so this is how the journey goes from biology based to temperament to rule based to the self directed emotion regulation so this basically model talks about these three levels of functioning so according to this model there are three levels of emotional function that may control individual differences of emotional uh, intelligence why some people have higher in it or some people are uh, lower in it these are one is biological basis of emotionality second is rule based learning of emotion emotional competence and the third one is self aware emotion regulation so let us uh, now we'll be discussing each of these uh, kind of uh, factors one by one and how they are relevant in the context of emotional intelligence and what kind of how can we use this understanding in terms of facilitating emotional intelligence so the first one is biological basis of emotionality so when we talk about emotional intelligence which or emotions uh, we cannot separate biology from emotions you know whatever emotion happens it it has a very strong biological component it influences our body or the biological aspect influences emotions we have already discussed the detailed biological mechanisms in uh, some of the earlier modules so the idea is the first layer of this model so there are three layers the first layer is biological basis so the first layer of this model talks about uh, biologically based temperamental qualities so some emotion are kind of biology based or biology influences the emotional expression so this level emphasizes the role of biology and genetics in influencing the emotional intelligence so the biological component and the underlying factors which influences biology is the genetics uh, and that can influence that can kind of influence the emotional expression and experience of the individual also why some people there are differences in the emotional experiences and regulation ab ability to regulate emotions some of these aspects could be explained by the genetic influence or the biological influence so it suggests that individuals may have inherent differences in their emotional responses and abilities due to genetic factors and the brain functioning so individual may differ in their emotional understanding expression ability to regulate one of the reason could be this biological factors inherent differences they come they are kind of born with certain biological tendencies which could be influenced by the genetics this genetic predisposition can influence an individual's baseline emotional state temperament and their innate capacity to perceive and regulate emotions so this kind of genetic predisposition so genetic will influence what are the whatever the genetic composition you have which you got from your parents can influence your baseline emotional state what is your general state of emotions some people are most of the time very kind of more uh, some people may be more emotional some people may be less emotional some people may be more agitated some people are more calm 
So, all this baseline state of emotions could be influenced by genetics, uh, the temperament and their innate capacity to perceive and regulate emotions, all this could be influenced by the genetic predisposition. These biological factors may in turn influence specific emotional processes. So, genetic will influence this predisposition to react differently. Some may be more reactive individuals, some may be less reactive. So, this predisposition is influenced by the gene and that can ultimately lead to uh, influence to other specific emotional processes such as perception of emotion, expression of emotion and regulation of emotion all the complex expression of emotion in the social world ultimately can be uh, explained through some of the biological inherent differences in the individuals in terms of certain tendencies. So, this level is more evident in the early childhood emotional functionings. So, when initially a child takes birth, it is very much uh, its function depends on the biological predisposition whatever the tendencies are there, the child will kind of behave accordingly, because child has not learned anything from the outside world much. This learning process will continue as the child grows, but initially it is much more influenced by the genetic and the biological tendencies that it has, particularly the emotions. So, babies even very young ones uh, can surprisingly understand and respond to emotions. We all know that, that even a child, even a newborn child kind of respond to emotions you know and they have their own emotional reactions also patterns. Some child could be very emotionally reactive, some child may be more calm and uh, some child will not kind of react initially much. So, all these individual differences even you can see when a newborn child where there is no influence of environment which shows that these are biological tendencies. So, this could kind of differentiate some of the individual differences. So, this suggests that uh, they might have some inborn abilities related to emotions, not just things they learn as they grow. So, some inborn abilities they are kind of born with certain emotional uh, abilities in terms of expression and uh, kind of reaction. Additionally, some newborns might be, uh, some newborns might have a biological predisposition to high be highly reactive when exposed to stimuli and novelty. Some children are very reactive though, or some children may cry a lot, some children may not cry much, they are more peaceful and calm. So, that reactivity differs in emotional uh, of child, so which are purely may be biological predisposition because child has not learned anything from the outside. So, this could be purely explained based on the biological or genetic predisposition. So, during the first year of life uh, when confronted with uncertainties, uh, such infants may display specific physiological responses such as elevated heart rate, physiological changes such as elevated endorphins levels which can make soothing them particularly challenging. So, some children you know initial years even you know, uh, when faced with some uncertainties, some fearful uh, stimuli, uh, they may react very strongly in terms of high heart rate or physiological changes on some hormonal changes and so on and it may be very difficult to kind of soothe those kind of uh, children. So, so, that this could explain the biological kind of predisposition for high emotional reactivity. Now, recent research also suggests that specific uh, traits related to emotion, temperamental traits might affect how emotional intelligence develops. You know. So, emotional intelligence which develop the development of emotional intelligence, so might depend on some of these traits, emotional traits you know uh, specific emotional traits that could be linked to biology also and more specifically two particular uh, temperamental traits are important in terms of uh, because they are influenced by the biology and they can also influence the emotional intelligence. So, one is emotional intensity. This is about how quickly and strongly emotional show, emotions show up and how easily they get triggered. So, intensity people differ in the intensity of emotions. Some people are very easily triggered by the emotions and they very they react very strongly. So, the intensity is very high and very quick. They quickly react to emotional situations. Some people may take more time. So, those individual differences kind of this, this can make a child either make a child very sensitive to stress and help them to handle better or something like that. So, that sensitivity is can differ from individuals to individual. So, this is one aspect that differentiate this individual differences that they are different in the emotional intensity. Second is the attentional process. 
So, this is about ability to decide when to do something and when to stop. So, how kind of you quickly manipulate your attention in terms of wherever it is required, when to start something and when to stop something and those kind of attentional processes. This can help a child deal with the stress by letting them control their actions more effectively. So, regulation of emotions and controlling action largely depends on the attentional processes. So, these two specific temperamental traits can affect emotional intelligence and these traits are biologically influenced. So, this temperament in conjunction with the family environment can hinder or support the development of emotional intelligence. So, high emotional intensity for example, this biological predisposition, it can interact with the family environment and it, it will determine whether somebody will become emotionally intelligent or not. The same emotional intensity could become a problematic in terms of the person will become too difficult and kind of difficult for that person to manage their emotions because it is very highly intensely experienced or it if it is regulated and learned or proper direction is given, proper understanding is given, it can become uh, an expression of emotional intelligence. So, it all depends on how it interacts with the environment, uh, can either hinder or support the development of emotional intelligence through various mechanisms as some of the studies indicates. For instance, a child with a natural inclination to experience negative emotions may face higher likelihood of emotional dysfunctions. For example, a child who is very uh, much uh, in terms of emotional intensity, they are more more towards higher ex, higher in terms of uh, experience of negative emotions. Some some people are more uh, kind of you know in terms of uh, life situations they experience more negative emotions you know. So, they are more vulnerable if little bit something goes here and they are wrong and their experience of they experience very strong negative emotions. So, they are kind of little bit uh, vulnerable and little bit more kind of unstable in terms of emotions, emotional experience, little bit things can disturb them and they can experience stress and anxiety. So, this this could if those tendencies are biologically determined that could lead to higher likelihood of emotional dysfunction later on in the life, it is possible not necessary. Uh, similarly, individuals residing in harsh environments that regularly trigger intense negative emotion may also encounter similar risk. Certain environmental factors also for example, somebody is continuously chronically are exposed to negative environment where there is a lot of abuse, lot of you know there is no happiness that will also slowly slowly kind of condition the mind and emotional experience in the negative direction and can lead to emotional dysfunctions. So, environment can also influence these biological tendencies can also influence how that person kind of later uh, in terms of uh, emotional intelligence, how they are, uh, you know, whether they, they will have high high in it or low in it, that can be de determined by both biological tendencies as well as the environment they are put into. So, since uh, this emotional intelligence or emotional expression can be partly biologically determined, obviously, it is not fully, partly biologically determined. Uh, some aspect of it may be relatively stable. So, if something is biologically determined means it is it will be kind of relatively stable, it will not be easy to change because it is it's very deeply influenced by the biological aspects or genetic influences. So, individuals with low EI may encounter challenges in acquiring emotional skills in later stage of life. So, it is possible if some of these aspects are very strongly biologically determined for that person it may be difficult to acquire some of the skills later in the uh, later stages of life. So, therefore, most experts consider childhood is a very critical phase for modeling lifelong emotional competences. So, it is easier to intervene during the childhood and if the child gets the right kind of environment, right kind of modeling from the other people, then it is easier to shape their emotional abilities and so on. So, during the childhood period is much more important because they are shaping the child's experience and understanding uh, and uh, it, it becomes much more easier because it is much more fluid during the childhood. So, intervention in the childhood could play a very significant role uh, how the child later on becomes in terms of their emotional capability and emotional intelligence. So, this major skills of EI may have uh, may each have a crucial periods of, of their development which spends several years during childhood. So, during childhood as the child grows, so 
child can learn all these emotional aspects in certain developmental stages as the child grows, uh, which may differ from some child to some child, but mostly they learn different skills of emotions as they grow and intervention during those critical periods are very important. As the child is learning, uh, if they are taught appropriate emotional expression, understanding of emotions and how to express, how to regulate, uh, that will have a very strong impact on their, uh, and on their emotional skills and abilities. So, each of these phases represents an opportunity to assist a child acquiring appropriate emotional skills and align with the tasks and challenges of that particular life stage. So, those different stages of uh, childhood gives a very strong, very uh, significant opportunity to shape the child's emotional abilities. So, if this opportunity to acquire these skills are missed during a specific phase, it can become increasingly challenging. So, later on it can also still be done, obviously one can learn whatever in the different later stage also, but it becomes difficult during the adulthoods and old age to mold your brain and understanding, you know because things become much more rigid in adulthoods. Childhood, you can shape the ch mind of a child uh, much more easily. So, this becomes much more challenging later, but it is not impossible, things can be done. So, not only, so another important aspect is that biology and emotion related behaviors could affect each other, affect each other. So, not just biology affect emotional behavior, emotions related behavior can influence the biology also. So, they are kind of uh, mutually influencing each other, each can influence other. So, biology can influence emotion related behavior. On the other hand, emotion related behavior can influence the biology also. For example, there is a growing evidence that the way infants interact emotionally with the caregiver can affect the development of brain areas responsible for emotional awareness and control. So, the what a lot of research actually shows that you know. So, how the child interacts with their caregivers uh, that will affect the development of their brain also. So, so, here the emotional behavior is influencing the biology that is the brain, especially the brain areas that are responsible for emotional awareness and control. So, it depends on what, what is the relationship with the caregiver and how, how that relationship is shaping up. Specifically, this interaction can bring out lasting changes in the structure of the a particular area of the brain which is orbitofrontal cortex. So, frontal cortex particular area could be influenced by this interaction between the child and the caregiver, uh, which in turn can impact uh, the neocortex ability to regulate the activity of the amygdala and other brain regions which are responsible for emotions. So, that interaction emotion related behaviors between the child and the caregiver can influence a certain brain region particularly this uh, frontal cortex, uh, which can also lead to further influence of the emotional areas of the brain. So, if a child interaction with the caregiver is insufficient or there is not much warmth or proper caregiving is not there or significantly abnormal. So, there is lot of neglect and other abuse those kind of thing if happens uh, with the caregiver, not proper uh, you know, uh, loving and uh, no relationship is let us say it is not built up during that childhood period, it can potentially impair the neural foundation of emotion regulation. So, it can impair the brain parts responsible for emotion regulations and emotional awareness. So, emotional behavior can influence your biology also and that can later create problem also in terms of behavior. Additionally, delays in language development and other things also can hamper acquisition of skills related to recognizing, comprehending and expression of emotion. So, how child's development of language and other thing that also depends on the caregiver's interactions that can also influence uh, a lot of emotional abilities like acquisition of skills related to recognizing, understanding, expressing emotions because child kind of interacts through language. So, for caregivers, educators and policy maker, the implications, practical implications are very clear from this biological understanding of emotion is that creating an enriching environment can be highly beneficial in nurturing a biological inclination towards high emotional intelligence. So, this biological predisposition for high emotional intelligence can be facilitated 
by giving enriching environment or giving proper nurturing during the childhood. So, that can also shape this biological tendency for high emotional intelligence. It can facilitate that tendency which, which is given by the biological predisposition. So, so, so that interaction with the environment can kind of uh, express its full potential. Furthermore, even if the child's emotional competence seems limited in the early years, there is a still opportunity to influence biological factors that becomes more prominent as the child grows and develops. So, this says it is a kind of developmental model, even if there is a limited abilities of a child during childhood, we can still do lot of intervention later on in terms of as the child grows for uh, which can be done later uh, developmental stages also. So, it is not that if child has not learned much during the specific period of childhood, it cannot be done later. So, there are other opportunities as the child grows where interventions can be done. So, this was the first layer of this model, the biological basis of emotionality where biology can influence the predisposition to experience emotions, regulate emotions, understand emotion in a certain, certain way and that can influence your emotional intelligence. And obviously, the kind of environment one is put during the childhood can interact with those biological tendencies to give a shape to those emotional expression and understanding and capabilities. Now, the second layer of this model where how a child learns emotions and expression of emotions and emotional intelligence related capabilities is through rule based learning. So, biology can facilitate emotional intelligence or hinder emotional intelligence in by influencing certain tendencies. Then child as the child grows, they also learn rule based learning of emotional understanding and competencies. So, they learn from other people. So, at this level, the model focuses on the acquisition of emotional competences through learning and socializing process. So, child learns things from the other people around them, from their parents, from their family members, from whoever is around and slowly, slowly they learn how other people are behaving and they kind of, uh, kind of imbibe those understanding within themselves. So, learning and socialization process, uh, uh, they learn lot of things including emotional competencies. So, it suggests that individuals develop their emotional intelligence through exposure to social cu and cultural norms as well as through personal experiences. So, society has so many norms where to express what, where not to express certain emotions and so on. The child slowly, slowly learns by looking at other people and uh, ex through their personal experience with different si social situations. So, at this level, so the in dynamic interaction with temperament, so biological temperament is always there that will interact with all these things and the final things, uh, final uh, expression will uh, come about by this the, the result of this interaction. The child learns specific competencies through attachment relationship with significant others. Family members, peers and teachers, they learn lot of these com emotional competencies from them. Here the child learns if then rules and recognizing emotion in self and others as well as displaying and expressing emotions. If some this kind of situation happens, then this type of emotion should be expressed. So, they, they learn uh, and imbibe from other people and their behaviors from the social situations. This family socialization is, is kind of uh, has a direct influence on child's uh, social and emotional competencies, interaction with the family and socialization. Additionally, it seems to have an indirect effect on social emotional competencies by shaping child's comprehension of emotions and their acquisition of social knowledge. So, so family socialization is has very important impact both direct as well as indirect impact on learning various emotional competencies. And in that context, more specific factor or critical factor is attachment between the children and the caregiver. Little bit of this we have already discussed in the biological factors. So, this family socialization most critical is in that is the care relationship with the caregiver as the child especially during the initial phase child is completely dependent on the caregiver and they verbally and non verbally they kind of imbibe everything from those caregiver. So, this plays very strong role on the child's learning processes including the emotional ability competencies. 
So, this attachment serves as the fundamental cornerstone upon which the child constructs the positive working model of themselves and their interpersonal relationship. So, they learn everything, their whole model of interpretation, understanding comes from that caregiver. In a sense, the child experience and the uh, caregivers over time supply them with the essential building blocks to create internal working model. So, all the data that they uh, kind of to build the model social world, it comes from this particularly from the caregiver. So, this quality of their relationship during this uh, specific period attachment relationship with the child and the caregiver plays very important role in shaping the development of emotional competencies, empathy and prosocial behavior. They learn from those particularly attachment figures, particularly caregivers. For example, a secure uh, attached children will be able to develop the ability to respond empathetically to others because they have personally encountered responsive and empathic caregiving. So, if they have a very secure relationship with the caregiver, uh, they are more likely to develop empathy towards other people. They will understand other people's emotions and concerns because they themselves were understood by their caregivers. Whatever they need, their emotional needs were supported by their caregivers. So, they are more likely to respond like this to other people. So, they will model that. So, whatever child learns, it is from the model and then they express it similarly. So, if they were properly understood and, uh, and emotionally cared, they are also more likely to show that with other people. So, that is what some that is what uh, kind of uh, research also shows the possibility is most likely to be like that. Now, apart from just uh, caregiver and the child relationship, overall emotional climate of the family is also very important in terms of shaping the emotional capabilities of the child. So, this uh, family serves as the primary environment where children initially acquire all the knowledge about different aspect of emotion including identification and strategies of emotion regulation. Because it is in the family context initially child experiences all the emotions, they see other people expressing all the emotions and this is how they learn all these things. So, this whole environment will determine how, what is their competencies, how, what is their learning process and so on. So, the quality of emotional atmosphere within the family is very significantly influenced by two major things, how caregivers and whoever is attached to the child express positive and negative emotions, how they are expressing, whether they are expressing too much of negative emotions or they are also expressing appropriately positive emotions or not, how caregivers respond to the child's emotional expression. When a child expresses certain emotions, how they are responding. So, these two factors are very important in terms of shaping the child's competence of emotional or emotional competence. So, as a result, the emotional climate at home has an impact on child's emotional responsiveness and the quality and stability of the relationship with the family members. So, how all this atmosphere that is created by the family members will directly influence the child and the nature of atmosphere will determine the child's uh, ability also. If it is very negative, that will hamper the child's abilities. If it is more positive and supportive, obviously, it will have a more positive uh, impact. So, studies have indicated that parents and caregivers who exhibit high degree of warmth and positive emotions, uh, while minimizing expression of disapproval, hostility and other negative emotions uh, directed at the child, typically raise socially competent, well adjusted children. So, most likely, you know, if caregivers exhibits or family environment kind of exhibits high degree of warmth and positive emotions, most of the time, obviously, it cannot be hundred all the time, but to a large extent, there is a environment is more positive and warm, full of warmth, then it and there is a less of disapproval, hostility and negative emotions comparatively, then obviously, it kind of uh, more likely to uh, impact the child positively and lead to more socially competent well adjusted children. Uh, furthermore, uh, the caregivers who foster appropriate expression of emotion in their children tend to have children who excel in emotional emotions. So, caregivers who also kind of encourage child to express emotions whatever they are experiencing appropriate emotions and teach them what is appropriate and they also encourage them not to just suppress them that also helps child in terms of understanding and regulating emotions. Some of the child rearing practices also can influence child's children ability in terms of uh, emotions. 
some of the data shows that parental control has a non-linear relationship with emotional competence, which basically means there is no linear relationship between these. So, basically, especially in the context of preschoolers, moderate level of control is related to optimal level of emotional competence. So, moderate level, not like extreme too much of controlling and too less of control both cannot as compared to both of these kind of strategies, moderate level of control has been found to be optimal uh, lead to optimal emotional competence. As compared to that other extreme kind of control uh, either too much of control or too less of control may lead to poor level of emotional competence at least some of the research indicates that. So, in that sense this is a non-linear relationship. So, parental warmth has also been linked to increased emotional competence likely because secure attachment in children is precursor for later competence in social uh, problem solving settings. So, parental warmth and other thing already lot of researchers shows lead to more likely to lead to emotional competence to the child. Parents who are more responsive and warm show more warmth uh, have also more socially adjusted children who are accepted by their classmates. So, all this have basically positive impact on the emotional competence. Children learn emotional abilities to protect them from the detrimental impact of stressful experiences when their parents are adept in expressing coping with aversive feelings. So, because they learn from the parents. So, how parents are expressing and regulating their emotions will impact the child's understanding also because parents act as a model and their expression and understanding regulation of emotions will impact the child and child will learn accordingly. Proponents of emotional intelligence claim that children learn from role models how to process and regulate emotional information and experiences. So, they learn from people who are elder whom they consider as their caregivers or role model, their behavior will be shaped by looking at them only. So, parents, teachers, particularly parents in the initial phase are the first and significant role model for the child and they learn their emotional competencies from them only. If they are not able to, they are not competent in emotional abilities and regulating emotions, uh, you cannot expect a child to be competent. So, this is the second level where child learns lot of this emotional understanding and capabilities and regulation of emotions from the people around them, from the family, from the society, from the schools and so on. So, this is a, the second level of understanding where child develops their emotional competencies and intelligence, emotional intelligence from the rule based learning from the social society. The third level is called self-aware emotion regulation. Here, it is the third layer of model which focuses on the formulation of self-aware strategic regulation of emotional behavior. Basically, it suggests that uh, individuals vary in their ability to be aware of their emotional state and effectively manage them. It is about your own individual ability, how much you are aware of yourself, how much aware of your weaknesses and strengths and your emotional abilities, where you lack in terms of control of emotions and impulses and all these things. So, how much awareness you have and how much you are consciously can control yourself. You know? So, that th this is not just based on understanding of rule based what should I behave by learning from others, it is your own ability. So, this is another level that a child learns as they grow, their own understanding can facilitate their emotional competencies. So, rule based means they learn appropriately wh what situation what should be expressed and so on from by looking at others. So, that is more kind of automatic learning. Here it is more self awareness from their own understanding and awareness and consciousness they learn to regulate emotions. It comes from their own consciousness from their own awareness as they grow. So, here child learns uh, develop sophisticated understanding of self as social being. So, they understand about their themselves, their relationship with other and so on. So, those sophisticated cognitive development happens, awareness happens. So, and they use this knowledge for emotion regulation. So, that is the self aware emotion regulation. Here emotion regulation comes from self reflective thoughts. The child has their own brain, own mind not just learning from others they also have their own brain. Uh, so, that is why you know this self awareness some people can have high self awareness and that lead to can be very individual could be very different you know uh, 
even as compared to people who are around them. So this person can have show very high emotional intelligence and it is possible that people around them are not that intelligent, emotionally intelligent. So one reason could be their self-awareness is more uh, and they learn beyond just rule based learning. So the role of self-aware emotion regulation becomes significantly more important with increasing age. So as the age increases, child learns more and more of this self-awareness, ideally they should learn uh, uh, and it becomes more important with increasing age. So this level comes into play when kids become aware of how to manage their emotion consciously, not just based on automatic learning, consciously they can decide what should I do. When they start school, they begin to evaluate themselves and understanding how to act appropriately based on what others expect. So all these things the child will kind of learn and expectations of others and what should I do and their own abilities and so on. So this go on goes, goes beyond simply following rules without really understanding why. So rules are more like you are automatically following them because others are following. So there is a norms in the society. You may not even understand why this is there. So the rules could be very, un, but very, very automatic and uh, you know unconscious. Uh, but self-awareness is it comes from your own understanding. So a lot of people sometimes you know may not follow the social customs and so on. They may follow their own understanding. So this becomes more important as the child becomes uh, as their age increases. So they le they learn more of their self-aware regulation of emotion. So learning to be self-aware like this requires social experience. It also comes from social experiences, obviously different situations and it is also important for kids to develop this ability to think about their own thoughts and feelings which is also called as a metacognition. Metacognition basically means thinking about thinking. How am I thinking? How am I feeling? So the child can look into their own thoughts and emotions and interpret. So thinking about thinking, so that is called metacognition. So this develops as the child becomes cognitively more complex. They not only look at other people and judge what they are doing, they can judge themselves also. So with the progress of age, so that is called metacognition. So this metacognition actually leads to more of this self-awareness and ability of self-regulation. It is only as kids get older around school age that they start to understand how emotions can influence their thoughts. They understand how it is influencing me and what should I do. So in a study, it was found that five-year-olds did not do well on the task related to this metacognitive skills. Eight years did little better and adults could do lot of this task very easily, this metacognitive task and self-awareness task. So it starts to develop from the age of eight years. After the five years, slowly, slowly it starts to develop. So as the child, children grow older, they become more aware of themselves as social beings and learn uses this awareness of their own position to regulate their behavior, kind of like how someone uses knowledge based skills. This development includes becoming mindful and having metacognitive self regulation skills. So this is what we have already discussed now. So at the age of from 6 to 8, they start understanding and controlling these thoughts. Slowly, slowly it develops. Uh, while at age 14 to 16, they become aware of specific cognitive processes. Uh, that help with planning for the future. So, slowly, slowly it becomes more consolidated at the age of 14 and 16. So understanding emotion explicitly helps uh, them develop conscious skills of managing their emotion. So conscious skills develops. They can control and consciously decide not to express something or to express not to express something, not just based on rule based, but based on their own conscious understanding. So this self-awareness is seen when they understand complex emotions, use reflective problem solving and build mental models of how the other things about the emotions. So it comes from this cognitive complex cognitive processes which develops as the self-awareness grows in a child. So this is about this model which talks about emotional capabilities and emotional intelligence could have as three layers. One is biologically based biological component can influence emotional capabilities and, and then emotional intelligence. Then the second one is rule based understanding that a child learns from the society and the cultural aspects where to show what kind of expression of emotions and so on. Uh, that also adds a layer to the 
emotional capabilities and the third one third layer is self awareness as the child grows and they become self aware they can even analyze themselves what they are doing in terms of all these uh, cognitive abilities uh, that out of this self understanding and consciousness they can also regulate their emotions so all these layers of factors could ultimately lead to emotional intelligence abilities and can explain why some individuals are more emotionally competent as compared to other why some are more emotionally intelligent as compared to others so these three factors can combinedly explain all these differences and uh, this also kinds of gives an opportunity to have some interventions so we'll see some of the general comments and implication of this model so this model very clearly shows that we have three ways to look at people why people are different in emotional intelligence why they are different it's because of things we are born with like our biology so why people are different in their emotional competencies and intelligence it is it may be because one of the reason could be we are born with certain tendencies people are different tendencies they are born with different tendencies so these different tendencies lead them to different capabilities so this could be one explanation second is it comes from learning how to adapt to situation using rules how you are learning from the environment some people because of the right kind of environment they are learning much competent ways of dealing with things some people because of the maybe not the right kind of environment and care giving they are not learning so much so this could also explain why people are different third is it's about understanding ourselves better through self reflections so to what extent you are able to understand yourselves and how much self reflection you do about your own behavior and it, and their impact on others so this is also a capability where individual differs so people could differ in their emotional intelligence because of these three factors all these three factors so this abilities can also be connected and affect each other all these things can be connected to each other and affect each other as we said biology itself has gives only tendencies where how it is expressed may depend on lot of socio cultural factors and the family environment and it could be also modulated by self reflection processes so all these th things could be connected to each other as kid get older self aware emotion regulation becomes much more important so this third one becomes much more comes into play when child grows uh, as they get older so as we grow our emotional functioning becomes less controlled by biology and more influenced by what we learn from social experiences so as we grow the biological influence become less and socio cultural and the self reflective influences becomes much more so this is what is kind of general understanding of this model now what is the implication of this model what whatever under, we have understood from this model how what what is the practical or applied implication of this one so th this model gives us very important some of the um, implications this model has in terms of applications one is that creating enriched environment as we also discussed earlier in the biological factors can be highly beneficial in nurturing a biological inclination towards emotional especially during the childhood when the child is learning lot of emotional competencies giving proper right kind of social environment family environment can facilitate emotional intelligence it is much more easier to shape a child minds during the childhood and those biological tendencies can be facilitated so even if a child emotional competence seems limited maybe in the earlier years still there is an opportunity this model at, at least says we can have an intervention later one also develop ei through proper socialization parenting modeling and teaching them understanding of skills for enhancing self awareness so all these things can also be interventions can be done later on initially initially also that all this could shape emotional intelligence uh, in the different stages of life not just at the childhood socialization processes parenting the nature of parenting how it is done what kind of modeling they are exposed to including parents teachers and so on and also teaching the child at the appropriate uh, developmental stages uh, their self awareness skills to understand more about themselves their strength their weaknesses and uh, understanding of the social world and who are, where you know oh, so all the self awareness skills can also lead to better emotional intelligence 
So, all these things uh, this model shows should be understood and kind should be kind of implemented uh, as the child grows in the different stage developmental stages all this can facilitate emotional intelligence. So, this is about this course. So, this was a course where you know it was a kind of long journey of understanding emotions and application of emotions particularly through the concept of emotional intelligence. And I hopefully that this journey of emotion uh, will be a very meaningful and enriching and insightful journey for whoever takes this course. Uh, from my side I try to give the best of the knowledge possible both theoretical and applied and uh, kind of crux of the information I took it from different sources uh, and uh, try to give understanding on different aspects of emotions which are relevant in our day to day life. So, if you uh, look at this course uh, I try to touch upon all the significant aspects of particularly the psychological understanding of emotions where we started talking with the nature background and history of emotions that is where we started in the first module we discussed various uh, background story the different theories the various historical figures who are important in the research of emotions and they gave contributed to the understanding of psychology of emotions we also discussed the universal and cultural specific aspects of emotion that how emotions some aspects of emotion could be universal and some is aspects of emotion could be very culture specific where some cultures experiences and expresses emotion in a very particular way which are not there in other cultures. So, all this very significant and inform uh, you know kind of interesting informations we have discussed in that module where we discussed universal and culture specific aspects of emotions. We also discussed the physiological impacts of emotions that emotions we cannot separate it from the biology. Whenever we experience emotion, it influences our body and different aspects of the body including brain, hormones and so on and uh, all these biological aspects we have also discussed. We also discussed self-conscious emotions, how some of the emotions are related to the development of self-awareness you know like you know shame and those kind of uh, guilt, those kind of emotions where a lot of self-conscious your sense of individuality, sense of me as a separate individual plays very significant role. We have discussed some of these self-conscious emotions and how they are important in the social context. We have also discussed the concept of happiness and positive emotions that how positive emotion is very important and it is connected to the sense of happiness. We discussed some of the theories and some of the possibilities and interventions that are we can use to enhance happiness in our life. We also discussed group emotions, how when people behave or kind of uh, are put or find themselves in the group situations or team situations, uh, what kind how emotion plays and expresses itself in the group situations. Uh, we have also kind of tried to discuss all these aspects. We have also discussed you know uh, the relationship between emotions and cognitions how thought processes and the cognitive processes influence emotions and the other way around how emotion influences our cognitions particularly memory and thought pro, uh, you know, you know, uh, decision makings, judgments and so on. So, those are also very interesting aspects of emotions. Uh, we have also discussed emotion based disorders that some disorders are very strongly connected to problems with the emotions or where there is a lack of emotion regulations. So, we have discussed uh, more specifically depression and anxiety disorders. Uh, then we have also discussed the concept of emotion regulation and coping, how to regulate emotions and do adaptive coping in the context of different challenges and stresses of our life. We have discussed specific strategies also and some theoretical perspective from in that directions. And at the end we have discussed uh, the theoretical aspects of emotional intelligence and applications of emotional intelligence. Uh, more specifically in the context of uh, workplace health and well-being and today we have discussed developmentally how to kind of developmental aspects of emotional intelligence and where how we can do certain interventions. So, these are some of the very important significant aspects of emotions we have discussed throughout this course and hope uh, it will kind of enrich understanding of emotions for whoever takes this course. So, with this I stop here. Thank you. Thank you.